Hey everyone, I'm Phil Albertelli, and this is The Week in Doubt, episode 238. All right, so I've decided to shake things up a bit. Get ready. I'm becoming a born-again Christian, and from now on, the show's going to be all about praising Jesus. Kidding, obviously, but I am planning on broadening the range of topics I discuss on the show. Usually I discuss news stories having to do with religion and or atheism. Here and there I release the special documentary episodes. But now in addition to all that, I want to cover some paranormal or offbeat subjects as well. Don't worry, I'll still be coming at it from a skeptical perspective. So I guess it will kind of be like Skeptoid, minus the abundant ads and the whole eBay scandal. <sighs> yep, I went there. That was awkward. Just teasing, I actually like Skeptoid. It was one of the first podcasts I ever subscribed to, and I still listen to it to this day. Uh, anyway, onward. So I figured I'd start by dedicating an episode to taking a look at the topic of Curlian photography. If you're not familiar, it's a photographic technique, or techniques, plural that some claim captures the image of a living being or even a plant or leaf's life force or aura on film. I first learned about the subject years ago as a little kid, watching a rerun of that old show In Search Of, hosted by Leonard Nimoy. The series covered a lot of different mysteries and paranormal topics, the Loch Ness Monster, Bigfoot, the disappearance of Amelia Earhart, etc. For some reason, the episode on Curly and photography really stuck with me, I'm not sure why, when I think about it, personally, the idea of a giant plesiosaur living in Loch Ness seems a lot more exciting than supposed auras showing up in photographs. But the mind works in mysterious ways, and who knows why certain things tend to stay with us over the years. I have to admit with some embarrassment that despite the fact that I've known about curly in photography since early childhood, I wasn't aware of the proper spelling until I researched this episode. I always assumed it was spelled C-U-R-L, like curly from the Three Stooges, but it's actually spelled K-I-R-L-I-A-N. It's named after Simone Curlian, who accidentally discovered the process in 1939. Simone, a Russian electrical engineer, and his wife Valentina were observing a hospital patient who was receiving treatment involving a high-frequency electric generator. They noticed when the electrodes were brought close to the patient's skin that a type of glow was produced, supposedly similar to that of a neon lamp or discharge tube. Curlian discovered that if an object connected to a high voltage source is placed on a photographic plate, that an image could be captured on the plate via electric coronal discharge. And you might be wondering just what the heck is a coronal or corona discharge? I viewed numerous definitions, and the one that seemed the most concise comes from freedictionary.com. So here's the definition. An electrical discharge characterized by a corona and occurring when one or two conducting surfaces, such as electrodes in a gas, is shaped such that it concentrates the electric field at its tip and ionizes the surrounding air. And a corona, generally speaking, is the glowing aura-like ring surrounding a luminous body, such as the sun or other star, for example. Despite the fact that the process bears Curlian's name, there were others who had also made related discoveries. In 1889, a Czech man named B. Navratil had coined the word electrography. In 1896, a Frenchman, H. Baraduc, created electrographs of leaves in human hands. And in 1939, the same year Curlian made his discovery, two Czechs, Pratt and Schlemmer, published photos depicting a glow or aura surrounding leaves. Simone and Valentina Curlian also experimented with objects such as hands and leaves, creating photographic images depicting silhouettes surrounded by an aura of light. Although the Curlians released their findings in 1958, not much mainstream interest was garnered until 1970, when American authors Lynn Schroeder and Sheila Ostrander published a book entitled Psychic Discoveries Behind the Iron Curtain. High-voltage electrophotography soon became popularized as Curlian photography. The Curlians themselves believe that their photographs depicted the life force or energy field supposedly surrounding living things, such as plants and people. They apparently thought the images could be used to diagnose illness, and published an article on the subject in the Russian Journal of Scientific and Applied Photography in 1961. 
One way of attempting to prove the existence of these energy fields was the so-called torn leaf experiment. Curlian photographs were taken of leaves at various stages as they withered, supposedly showing a progressively diminishing life force, or aura, as the leaf quote-unquote died. Leaves were also torn leaving a faint image of the missing part in subsequent photographs. But as convincing as this may or may not sound, it was found that when the image surface was cleaned of contaminants first, the missing piece wasn't visible. As it turns out, moisture plays a big role in corona discharge, so the less moisture in the leaf, the weaker the quote-unquote aura, no supernatural explanation required. In the 1970s, when interest in the paranormal was peaking, psychology professor Thelma Moss, the then head of UCLA's Neuropsychiatric Institute, conducted research into Curlian photography in a lab within the NPI dedicated to paranormal or parapsychological research. The unsanctioned and unfunded lab was mostly staffed by volunteers and was eventually shut down by the university. One former research assistant stated, many felt Curlian photography's effects were just a natural occurrence. Scientists like Beverly Rubick have attempted to use Curlian photographic techniques to find evidence of qi or chi, the eastern concept of a vital energy or life force inside all living things. Rubick has said of her own experiments that the sample size was, in quotes, too small to permit a meaningful statistical analysis. It should go without saying that chi or ki as a life force or energy, apart from a living being's own electromagnetic field, has been largely rejected by mainstream science. If you're still not sure whether or not a creature's life force can be captured on film, it should be noted that by using the right technique, Curlian images can even be generated of inanimate objects such as coins and keys. But even if Curlian photographs aren't magic images depicting some life force or spirit, energy, that doesn't mean we have to throw the proverbial baby out with the bathwater. It's still a valid photographic technique, or techniques plural, and the images produced are still really cool to look at. Curlian photographs even adorn the sleeve of George Harrison's 1973 album, Living in the Material World. So in conclusion, even for us skeptics, all is not lost, we can still at least enjoy the images for their own sake. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this episode on curly and photography. You guys know the drill. Uh, please like the Facebook page. Please follow me on Twitter. Please check out the YouTube channel. If you do check out the YouTube channel, please remember to like and subscribe. If you want to help the show out monetarily, you can use the PayPal widget at the bottom of the Podbean page. Just go to Podbean, P-O-D-B-E-A-N, and look for The Week in Doubt and scroll down. Or you can go to patreon.com slash The Week in Doubt and help the show out for as little as 99 cents a month. And speaking of Patreon, I've decided to start a bonus show for Patreon supporters only. And I feel kind of bad because I know the majority of you don't uh, support me through Patreon. And that's okay. And you guys will still get the free show, and that's still going to be my focus. But I think it makes sense that I reward those people who support me monetarily by giving them a little something extra. And uh, hopefully it might also prove as an incentive to uh, bring some new Patreon supporters on board. And I might actually record that first bonus episode today. We'll see. Uh, but all right, thanks guys, and uh, until next time.